Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music, and today, it's the 31st, is Franz Joseph Haydn's birthday. We're going to look at how to use standard MIDI files to analyze classical music. So you've heard of Haydn. When I was a kid, there was a radio show, a classical show in the morning that played classical music. And they sort of like started off really early with like medieval choral music and then some Baroque. And the bridge between the Baroque and the classical that they'd play was Haydn's music. He's considered the father of classical form. And it's a real different kind of structure than Baroque music. He was a tutor of Mozart's, a friend of Beethoven, and uh, he wrote like 106 symphonies, all uh, any number of string quartets. And his music is characterized by um, beautiful short melodies supported by um, instrumental forms with repeating patterns. And that's essentially what we think of now as homophonic or classical form. Well, if you are like me, and you, I hope you're not, I'll just say that, um, you're smart and stubborn and think you can learn everything yourself. And uh, that doesn't make for a good student, speaking as a teacher. <laughs> but um, for me, I had to really kind of take in and acquire information at my own pace. And so the, uh, for me, studying the works of, of Haydn on my own became really, really useful. For me, it was the, the piano sonatas, but listening to the string quartets and then the symphonies, also really, really useful. Well, if you don't read music, it's, it's a challenge, but fortunately, there are internet gremlins who have created standard MIDI files, standard MIDI files of... Uh, a lot of all the great classical composers' works. Now, they're going to sound like crap, but we can just fly them into our DAW. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, you're looking at my entire desktop here, and I have already done a little Google search and found the adagio from the uh, String Quartet Opus 76. It's a later um, work. I'm going to create a new empty project in Logic, and, and I'll just have to have a track. And then Logic and GarageBand and many other uh, programs will just allow you to grab onto the standard MIDI file, drag it into position. Let's import the tempo information. And it will create independent tracks, and it may well use the general MIDI mapping to give you violins, cello, piano, woodwinds, brass, whatever. Like, you see what I just did there? I got violin. For some reason, there's only three tracks, but we're just going to roll with it. I got a uh, couple of violins and the cello, the cello. This is a string quartet. There should be four players, two violins, viola, and cello, but it's all good. Listen, I'm going to color code these because I want to really be able to see what um, I'm doing. That is to say, I want each note lane to be its own color. And now that I've done that, everything appears down in my edit window, and I can really see the chords and the voicings. And this is really, really important for me. I'm just going to go ahead and roll it just the way it is. hear it. And because I want life to be beautiful, um, I think maybe a little reverb. So to analyze this, I'm going to remind myself that the string quartet is in G major, because I know that from downloading it and looking at it on YouTube first. But remembering that in classical music, frequently different movements will be in related keys. A related key to G might be D, E minor, C,
That sounded like C, G7, A minor. In fact, that's exactly what it was. Second inversion voicings of those chords. You can see them very clearly here. Going on. And then I can see that the next thing is just a repetition up an octave. Interesting, right? One of the hallmarks of classical form is repetition. But look at this new instrumental form coming. This is very Haydn-esque, those chunk, 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 chunks. We ended in C. Did you hear the key changing? You probably can. The addition, we were in C, right? The addition of this here, the um, F sharp, sounds like a D7 chord. In fact, if I look down here, I see C and D. It's the seventh and root. Ooh, did you hear the A7? See the C sharp? It's the major third of an A7 chord. There's a G up here, and we resolve to D minor. This is the first indication of a new key center. Whenever you have weird accidentals or notes that weren't there before, they are generally leading tones. They're pushing us to a certain place. Haydn's taking us on an excursion. <laughs> Listen, we could probably sit here and analyze the entire piece, but it would, it would take us a good half an hour. That would be time well spent. And um, I'm fascinated by the ability for us to just look at um, the screen and see a graphic representation of, of this piece. Even if I can't play it, I can still kind of look at it and analyze it. The, um, the biggest change in my own orchestration life and sort of like relationship to classical music especially came when I began listening to pieces and uh, looking at scores. And I read pretty comfortably, but if you don't read, this is a great way to do that. Even, even if you don't follow the details of like, oh man, the C changed to C sharp. Seeing the graphic representation and uh, hearing the sound as it changes gives you this kind of like little bump. If you're a musician and you're inclined to think about hearing and think about uh, relationships to, of sound and stuff like that, your mind is going to start building associations that your unconscious will be able to use later. It's a powerful tool. Feed your head, as Jefferson Airplane said. So it's a great way to feed your head. Standard MIDI files. You can find a standard MIDI file for anything. I'll tell you what, for contemporary cinematic music, Haydn is really old-fashioned. He bridges Baroque and classical periods, and he's at the very earliest part of the classical period. You might be more interested in, in uh, Brahms or um, Mahler. This is bigger stuff and a little bit thicker and a little denser and harder to manage. And that's why I very often tell my students to begin with Mozart or Haydn or early Beethoven. The forms are clear, the harmonic colors are etched, and hearing them and getting them into you is the open door to the later composer's more complicated sonorities. Well, I hope this has been useful. Happy birthday, birthday Franz Joseph Haydn. Did I say when he died? 1809. Mozart called him Papa Haydn. I'm inclined to think of him that way. Grab your standard MIDI files and uh, go to town. I'll see you next time.